uh, Earl Holloman from Louisiana. Actually, it's Earl Holloman from Louisiana. Louisiana. Oh, you say Louisiana. Well, Louisiana. well I'm I a Southern <coughs> boy too. You know, I was born in Mississippi. Yeah, but yeah, but you weren't born in Louisiana. No. Yeah. How do you say it? Louisiana. Louisiana. Okay. After King Louis, Louisiana. Everybody there says Louisiana. Small town though. Oh, Where a very grow? small town. Really? So. Where actually? Well. I was born in a place called outside a place called Delhi. It was yep. a, I, it was actually outside of Waverly, which was outside of Delhi. Mm -hmm. And Waverly was all there was at Waverly was a little tiny store and a cotton gin. And then I was born out in the fields out there. What made <laughs> you decided to be an actor or a writer or whatever? When when did this all happen for you? Well, you know, I I, I was adopted when I was a week old by the Hollamans, and uh, consequently. You know, I was the only, raised as an only child, and I, I went to see every movie ever made. And people used to ask me when I was about five years old, "What are you going to be when you grow up, son?" And I would mm -hmm. always say, "I'm going to Hollywood and be a movie star." Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So, uh, so you had that bug right, right from the beginning. It, huh? I don't know where it came from because my mother's people were from mostly farmers, and my uh -huh. dad's people were all in the, worked in the oil fields. Mm -hmm. and, you know? But it came, I think, it just came from watching those people up on that screen. Did you go to New York? That's the main place, New York City. Did you go? No, because I didn't know about New York. I mean, no, no. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I, mean, I just, knew there was a place yes, called New course, York, but, but the theater. You'd but I didn't know about. No, I just I saw all those movies, you know, and, and uh, that's where I wanted to go. I didn't know they were in New York. If uh -huh. I'd seen if I'd seen stage plays, uh, maybe I'd have gone to New York. Right. Yeah. But you did go to the Pasadena Playhouse after. We well, it was right. later. Yeah, as as you know, I, as you may recall, I hitchhiked out here. I had my fifteenth birthday on the highway. You're kidding. I, no, I hitchhiked from Louisiana from a little town called. Mooring sport, uh -huh. and I hitchhiked to, uh, to L.A. You know, I had my fiftieth mm -hmm. birthday on the highway. I was coming out to get into the movies. You know, how did Harold Holland handle this whole situation? Fifteen on the highway by yourself. You know, it was safe those days. I wouldn't dream of doing it today. Right? No, no, not today. You know, but then I never thought about it. You know, it was pretty, pretty safe. I, at least it was safe for me. What happened to you when you landed in L.A. first? Uh, I had an address of a, of, a, of a family whom I didn't know, but I'd right. been given this family, and she thought I was a serviceman coming out, a friend of her, her son's, you know, uh -huh. I, and whom I didn't know either. And uh, I was out here for six days, my money ran out. I thought I could come out and work at that time in defense work and then also go to school half time. But you had to be 16 in order to do that and prove that you were 16. This is the war time, the war years. That's correct. Ah, defense. That's and then I went the, back home and I went to school and then three months later I lied about my 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 age service. and I joined the Navy when I was 15. Came out you, here again. Really? Joined yep. the Navy? How yep. was that for you? It was wonderful. Yeah, I loved the Navy. It was great. How long were you in? I was in a year. They kicked me out. Uh -huh. Did you still have that bug about acting? Oh, of course, of course. Mm -hmm. But they found out how old I was and uh, you know my mother wrote and told them how old I was. Uh -huh. They kicked me out, went back home, finished high school and then back into the Navy. And that time I was stationed on the on the East Coast, and I I did uh, in my off-duty hours I did plays at the Norfolk Naval Theater. Ah. Mm -hmm. And then at graduation I came out here to go to USC. Uh, I was there for a term. I didn't I didn't think I was getting what I needed, what I wanted as an mm -hmm. actor. I was working at the library after school, and I went to work at at Blue Cross when it was a little building, and and they didn't have computers in those days. I mean we looked up by hand, you know, uh -huh. and, uh, Robert Conrad. Yeah, let's see, you know. <laughs> uh, and while, let's see, then I went to work in North America. Oh, but in the meantime, then I joined, no, then I went to Pasadena Playhouse. A couple How was of years. that for you? That was very good. What did you learn at the Pasadena Playhouse that you? Well, I learned, I learned, I learned discipline. I learned, uh, uh, I learned, I think I, I had an innate, I, always an innate sense of, of acting. You know? uh -huh. I, but I learned, I learned a reality, a sense of reality on uh -huh. stage. And, and Gilmore Brown, who was the head of the, the Pasadena Playhouse at that time, I, I in my second year I was assisting stage managing. Right. And uh, on a play he was directing, and I had consequently I had to, doing rehearsals. I played every part in it, you know, mm -hmm. men, that, women, whatever. That's I was it. Playing that's it. Because I was reading for whoever wasn't there, mm -hmm. and I always tried to put into it whatever I could, whatever I saw the actor putting mm -hmm. into it, and he took a great interest in that, you know, and he thought I had talent, and uh, that was nice, you know. When did you, who discovered Earl for the movies, the motion pictures, the very first? Well, let's see. What happened? Okay. 
Um, when I was at the Playhouse, there was a guy named Art Estrada and, my, and a friend of mine, Neil Levitt. And Art Estrada wanted to have his hairline lifted. So he had an appointment with Victor the Barber at Paramount Studios. And Neil Levitt and I, and Neil and I had been in the Navy together, now we were also at the Playhouse together. Right. And we, the three of us went in, we, we just went right through the gate saying we have an appointment with Victor the Barber. <laughs> and once there, after he had his appointment, we uh, just hightailed it around into various sets and so things, you know, just walked on. And it was wonderful. I, I found out all I had to do was just say, I have an appointment with Victor the Barber and <laughs> I could get in the Paramount studio. Yeah. You know? But did you get a job? Did you get Well, honest? I did eventually. Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, I, I, I had, after two years at the Playhouse, I uh, went to work at North American. I was making templates. We were making the Sabre Jet. Oh, okay. And I, you know, I, was, I knew nothing about making templates, but I was, I, I'm surprised they ever got off the ground, you know? Uh -huh. But uh, anyway, I used to, like, like once a month, I'd take off and I'd go to the Paramount because I had to get back into, you know, and, and I'd slip in the gate, par appointment with the barber, supposedly. And then I, I oh God, I saw things like, uh, like Sir Lawrence Olivier and Jennifer Jones shooting Sister Carrie. Uh -huh. You know, I saw uh, Kirk Douglas shooting Ace in the Hole. Mm. Uh, uh, it was terrific, you know, and it was terrific. While I was on the lot, there was a young girl that I'd gone to school with. She was in something called the Golden Circle at Paramount. They were developing young stars. Right. And she, doing one of those thing, uh, one of those visits, she introduced me to, to Paul Nathan, who was uh, uh, Hal Wallace's associate producer, no, later associate producer, at right. that time he was casting. And we became friendly. Every time I would go by, I'd drop in his place, then I'd drop in the other guys, the casting guys. Right. And I'd say, you know, when are you going to put me in pictures? It's like once a month I make this <laughs> call. You know? Well, finally, uh, Paul Nathan said, look, we'll gi I'll give you, he said, there's a one-line bit of an elevator operator in Scared Stiff with Martin and Lewis. Martin and Lewis. Yeah. And he said, yeah. I will give you the job, but he said, don't, you know, you take the money and run, cause, you know. You know. Uh -huh. So. It cost me, let's see, I made, I think, 70 or $80 for the day, and it cost me 150 to join the guild, you know, so yeah. I had to borrow that money. Yeah. And after I finished it, it was very simple. Dean Martin steps out of the elevator and says, which way is room 1401? And I said, straight down the hall and turn to the left. Uh -huh. um, as I was training my elevator operator's outfit in at wardrobe, uh, Bert McKay, one of the other casting men, I, and I came by and I said, Guy, they were on their way to put in a call for 25 guys for a picture they were doing called The Girls of Pleasure Island. Uh -huh. And they needed 50, they needed 25 young Marines, mm -hmm. four-bit players, and then 11, uh, the rest of them were, were extras. Right. So I said, guys, you know, thank you very much for this job, but I got to earn the rest of the money to pay for my guild you uh -huh. know, membership. Uh -huh. They said, well, you got to go to the barbershop and get a haircut. I had just gotten a haircut. But, <laughs> but a crew cut. But they wanted me to have a crew cut. So I went to, I finally I saw Victor the barber, you know, uh -huh. after all this time. And uh, when I got the haircut, they had called him and told him to give me a crew cut. Oh, my hair won't take a crew cut. I mean, it, it lay down, it was very short. And it lay down in front like bangs. And like Jerry time, Lewis, like Jerry Lewis. But, uh, no, lay, well, yeah, 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 kind of, but it was, it was the, very distinctive. Or the Beatoe, okay, was, but, but at that time, really, the main person, well, I think Truman Capote had a haircut like that at the oh, time, okay. I think. But uh, when I stepped out of the chair, there was this, I had remember these big ears and this broken nose and these uh -huh. little eyes and these 52 front teeth. <laughs> and then oh, to have this, short, short haircut with the fringe on top, uh -huh. little fringe, you know. <laughs> and uh, Skippy was the best thing that ever happened to me. I became a character actor, you know. I tried to be a good looking young guy, you know. I became a character actor. A character actor is the main thing in Hollywood. Of Everybody course. wants to be a character actor, not a leading man. People just think a leading man because you're gore. You know, they work all the time. Character actors sure. work. Of course. It's you have wonderful. done many films, over 60, 40 films, 60. I've done quite a few. You've yeah. done a lot. But uh, uh, anyway, I, I was stuck with that haircut for 15 films. Mm -hmm. you know, then and, after that, what ha what's the other one you did after? You remember? After what? After the okay, Jerry was, Lewis thing. Well, I did The Girls of Pleasure, Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island. Yeah, and then I went to Universal. I did my first real part in a picture called East of Eden. Um, no, pardon me, not East of Eden, East of Sumatra. Sumatra. Yeah, uh, with a lot of good actors. Uh -huh. uh, and then I did a, 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 I did, then I did a, I did a 3D movie 
at RKO, uh -huh. uh, which I saw in 3D when they previewed it, but by the time it came out, the, the fad had the, uh, fad had passed. Right, right. So, but it was a western, and uh, finally, uh, finally from there, I went to, uh, I went to Metro, and I tested for something called Tennessee Champ, and mm -hmm. got it. That was the and that was, was Shelley Winters. That's right. Shelley Winters, Tennessee Champ. Shelly Winters, Keenan Wynn, Dewey Martin. That's right. Yeah. And if you go into the Silver Spoon restaurant today, there's a big poster of Tennessee Champ right there as no you kidding. walk in. Really? Your name, it's all there. Shelly Winters, everyone. Well, I don't, was my name on the poster? Probably. I, I yeah. probably, I don't know, I don't but know. I, I know the name of that film. Is I had there. fourth billing. Okay. Uh, but, uh, Chuck I Bru think it could be. Yes. Chuck Bronson was also in that movie. Yes. As a prize fighter, you know. Uh -huh. uh, he had, he'd tested for my. Shelley was telling me she had fun in that. Oh, it was a great. It was a lot of fun. You uh -huh. know, a lot of fun. Uh -huh. uh, I played a punch drunk prize fighter, uh -huh. uh, who had a baby little baby harmonica, and he played. Every time you saw him, you didn't. Uh -huh. Once you saw the harmonica, but after that, you just heard this blues coming out. And he he wore uh -huh. a zoot suit and he kind of sat around and playing his harmonica, you know, and then fighting. And it was a wonderful part, which helped me a lot. Tell me about the bridge of... Bridges of Tokori? Yes, wonderful movie. Uh, the Great night, movie. Yes, indeed. The night they sneak previewed Tennessee Champ out in West, West Chester. Right. Uh, my agent came up to me and he said, he said, you're going to Tokyo. He said, I just, uh, I showed your test to Mark Robeson, who's the director. Right. And he said, you're going to go to Tokyo and do the Bridges of Tokori. Uh -huh. And that's what happened. I went to Tokyo. Mickey Rooney and I flew to Tokyo together. Working with Mickey Rooney, uh, crazy man, but fun. Tell me. I tell you, he, he was a delight, really. At he, that time. Well, uh, uh, see, I, I was with him. He didn't like to be alone, I think. And, oh, really? And, and uh, he suggested that I live in the same suite with him, uh -huh. which was great. I mean, we had twin beds and a, and a living room and all that. Uh -huh. And got to know him very well. And he was very quiet. He was very, he was a, like a different guy, you know. Mickey was, was quiet. Then. Yeah, he yeah. was quiet. He was sweet. He was uh -huh. nice, you know, he was a nice guy. And uh -huh. then when we went on board ship for three weeks. We lived in a, a, a little cabin, uh -huh. you know, on board ship. And so he was a good guy. But 1956, there was a great movie which I loved. And um, it, to me, I think it's one of the best films, Rainmaker. Oh, it's a wonderful film. With yeah. Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Bert, Lancaster. Bert Lancaster. You had two great giants there working. Yeah, yeah it was a wonderful. Earl, picture. I'm looking at you. Working with Catherine and Bert. Well, working with Catherine. What I, have you learned? I had just, first of all, I had just worked with Bert in Gunfight oh, at the OK in, Corral. Oh, OK. I played his deputy. And it was while I did that that I tested for the Rainmaker. Actually, it wasn't my test. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was a, a young actress from New York, her test, and they, they needed the guy and I filled in. You Paul filled Nathan it. said, yeah. you know, you know, you know, do the test. Anyway, that's how I ended up. It's a long story. Uh, Elvis Presley also tested for it. Did he really? Mm -hmm. It would have been his first movie had he gotten the part. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, but I, you know, it would have been a little unbelievable with Kate Hepburn playing his sister. I mean, his yeah, his sister. You know, and also it would have become it would have become an Elvis Presley movie. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. And as opposed to the Rain Man. Kind of guy was Elvis Presley. You knew him. I didn't know him that well. You did. No, I did not. No, oh, okay. Uh -huh. I thought you might have. No, known. we were both under contract to Hal Wallace at the same time. Right. Pictures, you know, but I, and he was I, you know, we'd we'd say hello, but I never really knew him. No. Unlike Elizabeth of, Scott was same thing. She was under contract. Elizabeth Scott. Oh yeah, no, she she I uh, she, know well. She knew him. Yes. Yeah. yeah she did a, well, several she, movies with him. I think. Oh, I think at least one. Yeah. yeah. Loving you. Yeah. 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 yeah it was right. a great movie. Right. She she's a great lady. She's still around. I love she's her. A nice you lady. still. Yeah. Tell me something, Earl. You're doing something right now. It is actors and others for animals. People in Hollywood, celebrities like you, use your names, celebrity, help people, help the, you know, tell me about this, actors and others for animals. In 1971, right. <coughs> uh, Richard Basehart and his wife Diana were driving down the freeway and they were shocked, horrified, when they saw somebody just toss a, a, a living dog out the window on the freeway. Oh. And they became so incensed that they said, we've got it, we've got, well, they formed an organization uh -huh. called, well, it was going to be Actors for Animals, but uh -huh. there were other people involved too, so they called it Actors and Others for Animals. Uh -huh. 
uh, to bring to the attention of the American public plight of animals in this country and, and, the, and then try to do something about the cruelty and try to do something about the spaying and neutering, et cetera. Right. Uh, that was 71, 1971. 1973, they used to do a fair at the Burbank Studio Ranch called the Actors and Others for Animals Celebrity Fair. Mm -hmm. And I went out to sign autographs at that time. And I never left the group, you know. Uh, I joined the group, and in, in 1976, at that time, Doris Day was Doris Day was the, uh, she was the chairman of the board, yes. yeah, and, and like the figurehead. You know. mm -hmm. I joined the group at that time. 70, oh, in '73 and '76, uh, Doris had moved on, and I became uh, president. Uh -huh. And I'm still <laughs> still president. Uh, if I had a son, I guess he'd be president. Uh -huh. uh, it's. Uh, but I mean, it's been a very, it's a very good organization. It's an animal welfare organization. You're doing something, I think, in September the, uh, what day is that now? The 27th? No, 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 no. August. No? August. August, I mean, August this 26th. Month. Yeah, August 26th. Yes, indeed, yeah. Yeah, just a few days, yes. August, the, yes. Uh, Saturday, August the 26th. Where's that going to be? It's at the Universal Hilton. Hilton, okay. Yeah, and every year we, we do a fundraiser, a big fundraiser. Um, last year we, we roasted, for the first time we did a roast, and we roasted Betty White, uh -huh. who was on our board. Right. And this year we're toasting Dick Van Dyke, uh, and it's going to be great fun. We brought a clip, uh, that's from last year. Oh, from last year, right. Yes, right. and can we show this clip oh, sure, uh, from sure, last year sure. so my audience can yeah, just see? because Betty needs the residual. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see it. I heard by the grapevine that there was going to be a roast in my honor, which I appreciate very much, I think. It hasn't happened yet, and I don't know what to expect. But it does give me a chance to say how proud I am for all the good work that Actors and Others for Animals has done. We started a long, long time ago, and my deep congratulations go to Earl Holloman and all concerned. I'm not going to start naming names or I'll leave somebody out. You've done such wonderful work over the years and you've never flagged. So many people start a wonderful system, but then they, they fade off. You've never done that. Please keep up the good work and I do appreciate it. I am looking forward, I think, to hearing what people are going to say. But in the meantime, I'm a little confused. The invitation invited us to a vegetarian lunch, and yet you're serving roast Betty White. How does that work? Oh, I, those people are just wonderful, all you guys. are. We had a great time, and this year is going to be fun, too. Uh -huh. uh, How do people contact you for this now? Uh, they're selling tickets. They are selling tickets, yeah. For the animals. Go for ahead. The, uh, they con well, they can call Actors and Others for Animals. Okay. And that number is 818-75... Uh, no, pardon me. Because uh, it's a benefit for animals. Go ahead. 755 uh -huh. August the August the twenty sixth Saturday August the twenty sixth. Also, they can they can get tickets on the website. On a website. Yeah, they can, we have a website, actorsandothers.com. I think it is. Um, How did you get that role in Police Woman with Angie Dickinson? That's a great. I mean, that role, Earl. That really made it. It's I mean, interesting after all those films. You know, all the movies you know. you've done, everything you've done. 
certainly Johnny. police woman. Yeah. It, 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 was, it was number one. The first year, it was all over the country. It was, I mean, all over the world. It was in 50 countries the first year. Right. And, and, and at that time, I was told it was even number one in Abu Dhabi, of all <laughs> places. Uh -huh. um, I got it because Doug Benton, Douglas Benton, a great guy, was the producer of the, of the piece, yeah. of the show. And I had done uh, a, my second series called Wide Country. I had done for him a rodeo. I played a rodeo cowboy. I like know. that. I remember that. Good show. Yeah. Wonderful show, yes. And uh, uh, he was the associate producer on that show. Uh -huh. So when he did this one, he said that they had signed. Well, see, what I had just done a, a police story, and it was a real vehicle. It was a wonderful thing called Fingerprint, true story. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, Angie did one called The Gamble, in which she played Suzanne Anderson, Pepper Anderson. Um, when NBC saw the rushes, they said, what a great idea for a series. You know, uh -huh. look at her. You know, she was gorgeous and yes. sexy and you know, incredible. And uh, so they, they made a deal with Angie to do the show. And the part that I that I played was played in the original pilot, in, in the original show by Bert Convey. And, uh -huh. and I think I don't know whether Bert was available or not. I know I think they thought he was too good looking, you know, mm -hmm. for the part. Yeah. You keep saying that throughout this interview. Too good looking. You're you're a great actor. Looks don't mean whatever it is. Well, I mean, no, no, but unfortunately, no, it did. You for are him. a good looking man. You know oh, why? Well, okay, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, Doug Benton, at uh -huh. that time, they were interviewing real policemen from the LAPD right. who would come in and tell stories, uh, adventures, uh, incidents that had happened to them, anecdotes. And he said it was amazing. He said, all these guys, he said, you know, they're from, you know, like second generation, third generation, Oklahomans, Texans, you uh -huh. know, who moved out here during the Depression. And he said so many of them reminded him of me. Uh -huh. So he had me come in, you know, not, not to read, he, they just offered me the part, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's how I got, first I didn't want to do it. Mm. I thought, why do I want to do something called Police Woman, you know? Yeah, of course. At that time I'd done two series and, and I had my name above title, right. solo, and I thought, well, no, it's, you know, Police Woman. Thank God I did it. You know, it's, I, Working with Angie, oh, tell me. Incredible. It's great lady. Well, she, it took us a while, it, it's amazing because we didn't know each other. And the first day that we shot, they came back raving about the chemistry between these two people. Right, right. You know, it was just very interesting. The Strong woman. Well, yes, indeed. But, but also, uh, Doug Benton was very smart. He, uh -huh. uh, he let us uh, do a lot of ad-libbing, you know. Uh -huh. We had a script, but I mean, I'd say something and she'd come right back yeah. or she'd say something. And a lot of the sexual under, uh, the uh, undertow, kind yes. of uh, that innuendo, all the, a lot of that was, the develop the relationship was out of our little ad-libs. Uh -huh. Thornburg, I'm I love that I love that series. Thornburg? Thornburg, the Thornburg. Tell me about it. That series, I love it. Well, I you know that is one. Of, who was in that actually? God, there were so well, many. How, how much time have you got? No, yeah. there were so a many. lot of people. Richard Chamberlain. Uh, Chamberlain was yeah. really great in that. Yeah, right. Um, don't ask me now. There's just no, too many don't people. Worry. Too many too people. Many people. Yeah. You enjoy doing that, did you? Yeah, we went to Hawaii. We, did, we shot the sections that Piper Laurie and I played husband and wife, and we shot the sections that we were in in uh, on Kauai. I've never uh, been to Hawaii. That good actress, been. Piper Laurie. Indeed, indeed. I yeah. sat here interviewing her once. She's a theater actress. Good, good actress. She's wonderful. I yeah. love Piper Laurie. She's a great Sweet. gal, too. Is she? Oh, yeah. She has great... I love it because she laughs at my jokes. Uh -huh. yeah, she Is Earl funny? Oh, sometimes, yeah. Uh -huh. I can be very funny. Oh, not okay. today, not today. I'm being serious for you, Skippy. No, but what is Earl doing? Uh, what is your, you have hobbies and stuff like that? What's your hobby? You have a hobby? Favorite? Uh, you know what, I must tell you, honestly, I... I or how do you relax? Uh, well, these last few months I haven't relaxed very much because we're putting this event together, and that's okay. a lot of work. It is. Uh, actors and others takes a lot of time because it takes a lot of my time. I, I write thank you notes for every buck that comes in there. Uh, personally, I mean, um, it's just, uh, it's, an, it's a nice organization. I don't know, we didn't talk about what we do, but we do a lot of good things. We get anywhere from 100 mm -hmm. to 300 calls a day for help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes people say to me, why do you work for animals and not people? Mm -hmm. And my retort always is, 
Now, out of those 300 calls a day, how many of those calls do you think are made by animals? Mm -hmm. You know, we help people all day long. We just help them in areas that, where they can't get help elsewhere. You know? If you weren't an actor, Earl, if it didn't happen, what would you have thought? Did you ever stop to think what you've done? Yeah, probably. I, I, uh, I always thought, you know, I had, it's a different world today, but when I went to school, I had great respect for my teachers. And I had some wonderful teachers who, who, who made an impression on me. And, and that's a southern, uh, that's your southern that, background. That's my southern background. That's right. Yeah. You have respect for your elders and your people and your ladies. And that is a southern, um, we well, don't have it. Even if you're southern today, there's still. Yeah, it's it's there's a different world, Skippy. Yeah. What do you, it is a different yeah. world. I'm not happy in this world, Earl. Well, yeah, but. I'm not, uh, not at all. I, I just know, think, but where are you going to go that you're going to be happier? Skippy? Well. There are places. Now, America's not the only no, no, you, place. No, but you're talking now. about this world. You know, well, you can't get away from. You know, no, the whole no. world is screwed up we right are. now. You know, Hard. have you had a good time since I've had you? A one, you know, Skippy, I've had a wonderful life. I, I yeah. my God, I, uh, you know, to grow up and and make a make money and 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 make a living and uh -huh. be able to retire and you know and uh -huh. live happily and nicely, because of something I dreamed about when I was four, or five, six years old. I mean, how many people get to fulfill their dreams, you know? And I did, you know? It's, it's been wonderful. I had Do you a, write? Paint? I, I like paint? writing. I like to write, sure. Uh -huh. I like to write. I about a book? I Have tried you done painting. a book yet? I, I once painted. No, I tell you, I, I got a lot of stories, but... Uh, well, why but don't you... I, you seem very funny. Why don't you tell some stories? Or, if you don't, just, you don't want to write about your life, write some humor. About well, life. life is interesting. I mean, the background is interesting. I, we won't get into all that, but you know, I told you I was adopted when I was a week old. Yes, which is true. And you know, I was one of ten children. You know, and my real father died before I was born. The other kids went to the orphanage, and then when I was born, was uh, it tough for you as an orphan as a child? Not at all. I had a wonderful childhood because I was adopted by the Hollemans. Right. You know, and yeah. they were my parents from that from. So you don't know day eight. You yeah. know. Uh, no, I, no, I do know. I they they allowed me as I grew up to to meet my brothers and my sisters and well, did they? and my birth mother. Sure. How yeah. did that happen? They just, just told me. You know, from the time I can recall, I remember I used to say adopted. I thought I was adopted, uh -huh. and uh, when I was seven years old, at that time my dad had had been injured and developed epilepsy, and he was in the veterans hospital. And uh, my, I said to my mother, you know, tell me a bedtime story. And she told me a story about this, this family looking for a, a special child and they couldn't find it. And, and I know we're getting short on time, but that's okay. But uh, said uh, she told me this lovely story about how they looked and looked and looked and finally found this very special baby, which they took and raised and they loved. And when she got through with the story, she said, that little baby was you. Uh, and that's how I really learned what it was to be adopted. And uh, that's, yeah. It was, no, I had a wonderful child. September I, the 26th, this is the animals, actors,